Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Sunday, uh, actually a pretty miserable Sunday for uh, many, many areas in coastal New Jersey, uh, Long Island, and southern New England. Uh, weather conditions have been improving north and west of there, and weather conditions have improved across the Carolinas, specifically North Carolina, that endured one foot plus rains in many areas. Matthew has now completed the transition into a post tropical cyclone, and uh, you can see the comparison between uh, Matthew, uh, the way it is now, you can see how different it looks from the way it was. And we have a uh, tropical storm Nicole down here as a comparison where much of the activity is sur uh, surrounding the center, although most of it has been sheared to the south uh, in the tropical storm. This is a, has a typical tropical storm appearance. This system with Matthew has now a typical nor'easter appearance uh, with uh, weather fronts uh, and a low center that has actually down, I have, a, I have a, I drew it maybe a little bit too far to the north, but the bottom line is that what happened uh, with Matthew is that it made, as it tracked up the coast, uh, it made a transition. So we have uh, the rain shield concentrated on the uh, northern and western side with very little going on in the east side except for a line of probably some showers and maybe a few embedded thunderstorms. So uh, this really turned into uh, an early fall uh, nor'easter, albeit not a very strong one for uh, the areas across from uh, Delaware on up uh, into southern New England, although I have to, the rainfall in uh, Delaware was pretty significant. Uh, some of that heavy rain did extend into southern and parts of central New Jersey, where areas did get uh, two inches or more. Let's uh, we'll take a look at the radars, and and you can see what's the sharp line of uh, the rain uh, goes back to New York City, and now moving uh, just about getting ready to exit uh, coastal New Jersey. Uh, it's going to last over Long Island for a while longer, so this at least will add to some of the rainfall amounts that occurred out here, one to two inches so far, and uh, there probably will be some two-inch-plus rainfall. So from the standpoint of the drought, it was pretty generous. The same holds for Connecticut. Uh, we've got uh, some bands of moderate rain now coming in as that western edge makes its way eastward. For northern New Jersey and for many areas in the Hudson Valley, uh, there was very little rain out of this. So uh, you folks did not catch uh, any of the uh, significant rainfall, uh, which would have been really nice. Uh, and uh, just a quick look, you can see these are actual measured rainfall amounts uh, on the order of uh, about a half an inch to an inch. Not all these numbers have uh, been up updated yet, uh, but we will do so. I'm going to uh, punch up uh, the uh, let's punch up the models and show you what's going on as we go forward and I'll give you a tighter region here so we can look at uh, the eastern part of the United States. Now Matthew is just going to pretty much move out uh, as a non as a non-tropical system to the east and northeast and uh, I'm going to take a look in a second to see if it's going to impact the maritime provinces. You can uh, look at um, Nicole uh, as it uh, gets eventually just sits there for a little while and because of what's going on in the upper atmosphere uh, it will get kicked out to the east so as far as the weather in the eastern part of the united states is concerned the only um, thing that's coming through here is along about thursday we have a weak front that's going by and that's going to allow another high pressure area to build in so the weather is going to be basically dry probably right through next weekend uh, and into the first part of next week barring any last minute surprises so let's take a look at what's going to happen with the post-tropical cyclone Matthew as it moves uh, northeastward. Uh, we'll uh, switch it off to uh, southeastern Canada and uh, take a look at what how close it gets uh, to the maritime provinces. And you can see on, on here, it really doesn't get close at all. There is a weather front that is moving through uh, the maritimes. It might even produce a uh, it looks like it will produce some showers, uh, even uh, an indication of a little bit of snow. But Ma Matthew uh, tracks pretty much east there. As you can uh, take a look on the bottom of the map, uh, it shows up, and, and that will be that uh, as far as the Maritimes are concerned. Now, with regards to the upper air pattern, we're going to look at that. Let me uh, switch off. We'll go to 
the North America view and put the upper air on to see what we're looking at going forward. And I'll back it up. And you can see how the jet stream, you know, the trough in the east lifts out. We kind of get into a flat flow. Uh, and there's uh, Nicole is way out here. Uh, we've got uh, another, here's Nicole. Um, let me just change colors, go to red. You know, we have this up, the, you know, this strengthening northwest flow out of Canada. And if we were deeper into the fall, the next air mass would be a fairly cool air mass. Big upper high that's built up uh, in Alaska. We've got low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska. So this sets us up for cooler than normal conditions going forward. And we'll take it along and see what the model does with it. Now, eventually over time, notice that the trough position kind of shifts out uh, into the west. So that's going to allow another big ridge to build or try to build in the eastern states as we go into the middle part of the month. It doesn't really look like a stormy pattern. Now, now moving further ahead, there is some troughiness in the east. And we also have a little bit of, uh, we'll just show you here, I'll um, outline it blue for a ridge. You know, we have a bit of a ridge here building up in Greenland. So sometimes that can tend to displace cooler air or as we get deeper into the fall, we'll call it colder air southward. And there is a bit of a flow coming out of Canada uh, as we uh, move through the second part, uh, the latter part of the month. But of course, this is what I would call, you know, sometimes it's, you know, referred to as long range fantasy land. We don't know if this is actually going to occur uh, as we uh, go toward uh, the, this is for Tuesday, the 25th. And again, this is nothing, you know, this is just, pure speculation at this point, um, but, you know, we have this upper high that's uh, building over Greenland and the flow across the United States with a couple of troughs that wind up moving through. We don't have established yet what I would refer to as a cross-polar flow. Um, that's where the jet stream is coming down, something like this. You know, we don't see that yet, so the air from Canada uh, remains basically trapped up in Canada, the colder air is going to wind up, you know, flowing in a sort of crazy way like this. We don't have that cross-polar flow setting up at the moment. So it, it just kind of looks to me that going forward, barring any tropical systems, uh, we are just going to be in kind of uh, mid-October mode, uh, mid to, which, which is generally dry. Um, October is a very dry month. Uh, for uh, much of the Northeast as the transition over to toward winter uh, slowly continues. I'll uh, pull up the tropics real quick. We'll get a tropical view and look at the North Atlantic to see if the uh, GFS does any kind of uh, tropical systems. It did for a couple of runs try to show something coming out of the uh, Southern Caribbean. Um, as we look on this particular model run, it does have a couple of disturbances running around, but it didn't really do anything with them. So we're just going to have to watch and see. Sometimes it does that. You know, you have a couple of runs where it shows a tropical system, then it doesn't show it, and then it shows it again. You know, hurricane season runs till the end of November, so it's always possible. <clears throat> now that we're going toward mid-October, activity begins to naturally lessen uh, in, fre uh, uh, in frequency, but it's always possible to see a tropical cyclone develop uh, during the latter part of October and into November. Hurricane Sandy was an end of October storm just as a reminder so that pretty much wraps it up for today um matthew is just about done and we can put it into the history books and now it's time for a little calm weather and quiet weather uh, and uh, a time for everybody to kind of wind down and um, just move forward uh, as uh, you know the atmosphere spends out all that energy and then it just takes some time to kind of calm down and uh, regroup and set itself up for the next uh, 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 expansion of energy and expression of energy. So have a great day. Don't forget SS Storm Chasers. They did a great job uh, with the Hurricane Matthew bringing back, uh, bringing back to you some pictures. You can check it on, on uh, their Facebook page, SS Storm Chasing, and on their website, ssstormchasers.com, and of course, meteorologist joechaffee.com, and weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com, and you can find me also on Facebook and Twitter. The links are on the YouTube page. And thank you very much. I'm sorry I uh, was not able to get back to every comment 
while we were kind of in stor storm mode. I, I just didn't have the time. I did go back in yesterday and try to get to um, all of your posts. If I missed yours, uh, I apologize, and uh, we'll try and get it um, next time.